There you go. Welcome to December 11th. It says December. What did I do? Did I really? <laughs> well, welcome to the October 11th, 2024 Rotary Club member. I don't even know my name. <laughs> this is Stephen Hammers. I am this year's Rotary President, and I am happy to be. Jordan, take me to where you work. I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, we're going to have the invocation by Hunter McCarty, the Pledge and Four Way Test by Bob Thompson. So, Hunter, there you are. All right. At least I know what month it is. Uh, pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we gather here today in the spirit of fellowship and service. We are grateful for the opportunity to come together and work for the betterment of our communities and the world. We ask for your guidance in our discussions and decisions so that we may serve others with integrity, compassion, and wisdom. Bless this meal in the hands that prepared it, May it nourish our bodies as our work nourishes our hearts and spirits. Thank you for the blessings of friendship and the chance to make a difference. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And join me in the four-way test for the ways we think, say, and do. First, second, third, fourth, I'm happy the crowd that turned out. I thought it was going to be a lot less on fall break for Williamson County. Thank you very much. Jennifer. Ruane, she out there? Well, she didn't tell me. Um, somebody grab Bart out there, see if he can introduce visitors. Nothing like when a plan comes together. All right, I got an easy job. Oh, we only thank have you. we only have one visiting uh, guest here today, and it's the guy that I just met. So, <laughs> Scott, have you had a chance yet to introduce yourself to the club? Hi, my name's Scott Robinson. Uh, I work over here in Maryland Farms. Have had the uh, wonderful opportunity to visit some of your meetings as a guest. I think I have a subtle approval. Uh, I'm hoping to make it an official approval soon and will become a permanent member uh, as long as you'll have me. So appreciate it and have a great day. And that's our only guest for today. Awesome, Scott. Thanks, Keely. Uh, Michael Hyman, happy bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll kick this off. Um, Susan and I just returned Monday after two weeks in Egypt. We saw the country from Alexandria to the Sudanese border. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. Of course, as an architect, it's great to see magnificent structures that may be 5,000 years old. Uh, someday, I suggest you ask Sid Smith and Lewis Rankin just how they did it. So, <laughs> uh, Anybody else have anything exciting to announce today? Did they hire you as the architect? <laughs> I see. Um, got to give two bucks for anchored down Vanderbilt. My son, 
I mean, that was like one in a hundred, right? My son and I were downtown and I have a video that I posted on my Facebook of the goalpost. Remember the goalpost was carried for over two and a half miles wow. across the interstate. Police escorted into the river. Into so, the river? The goalpost. Uh, Did they uh, leave it? Uh, that's, that's, that's just epic. You're down. Alan. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I just uh, <laughs> got uh, one thing to say. Uh, roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> No, I did. I did uh, put that dollar in for Hunter, stand up Hunter, and Steve. They put up with all kinds of jokes. Okay, and I, I just want to let you know. I looked up in Wikipedia. This is a true story, uh, <laughs> and I was curious about Cornelius Vanderbilt. And they had on the intro it said uh, New York uh, phil uh, philanthropist. And railroad tycoon, uh, well, is it shipping tycoon, and also better known as the daddy of Alabama football? Your daddy now. <laughs> hey, Bert, you don't have anything to say, do you? No, you're just being quiet today. Okay. Vanderbilt's goalposts have been up there 127 years. <laughs> I'm just going to have to borrow it from Dick Bauer. I didn't have a seat. Um, just a, a couple of uh, Navy events uh, this weekend. Uh, if anyone is interested and available tomorrow at the Middle Tennessee Veterans Cemetery, the local submarine veterans uh, chapter will be holding a ceremony called Tolling of the Boats, where we uh, read off the names of all the submarines that have been lost and the thousands of submarine sailors who were lost on them, uh, most of whom never returned to uh, uh, be uh, commemorated uh, in the ground here. Uh, it's at the uh, Veterans Cemetery west of town, not the one at Madison. 11 a.m., everyone is welcome to attend if you'd like to come out for a, a moving ceremony about uh, lost submariners. And uh, probably more happy is uh, Sunday is Navy birthday. And uh, as, as Tom Carr would note, uh, the premier uh, service in the United States military. Go Navy. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, Dick, when he pays you back, you have a single then. I just want to let everybody know how happy I am because I was communicating with my nephew in Tampa and everything in his house is okay. Good. It'd be nice if we get everybody with good news to sit at one table. <laughs> Um, I, since we're talking about Vanderbilt and goalpost and 127 years and all that stuff, I'll share a little trivia with you. Um, the first Vanderbilt game played on their new field in 1921, I think, was against Michigan. And the big game, they played to a 0-0 zero to zero tie. That week, during the week, I don't know if it was a Wednesday or a Thursday or whatever, they let Father Ryan High School and Hume Falk High School play on the same field. My daddy was a running back at Hume Falk. He scored the first touchdown ever scored in Vanderbilt oh, Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> and to, to make it even cooler, when they first put their first artificial turf down, which was several years ago, the Astro turf, which was terrible, when they put that down, they actually gave my daddy a square of the turf with the description on there about scoring the first touchdown. So that, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Didn't you forget something? <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you very much. All right, announcements. Tom Carr, where did you go? Tom's got an announcement for us today. So, what uh, For those of you that don't know, Joyce, uh, the building that we're in right now was uh, really founded by her. 
she started with a leadership Brentwood idea to build a senior sit center back in the 90s. And she got together and got a hold of Charlie Martin and several others, and they built it. And she was their first director. And uh, she was also uh, a, the recipient of our uh, Outstanding Citizen of the Year a couple years ago. I can't remember exactly which date. But great lady, uh, wonderful lady. Don't have any funeral uh, uh, arrangements yet, but I'll let you know. We'll, we'll make sure that gets out to those of you. I hope they'll have it here because this was her baby. This was the house that Joyce built. So thank you. Awesome. A few little announcements before we uh, have Linus come up. Um, don't forget, you see it up there on the 12th. We have Rotary Leadership Training in Dixon tomorrow. Um, if you'd like to read to the Kenrose Elementary, please contact Roger Greenup. Remember, we do that. We also give the speakers a little book to sign. That's what that's for. So love to have a good participation. So don't forget to contact uh, Roger on that one. District Conference in Cool Springs is November 8th. And please put on your calendars for the um, Christmas holiday uh, banquet that we have every year. It's at Richmond Country Club, December 6th. I said December. December 5th. Okay. October 11th. It says December 5th right there. But right here it says the 6th. <clears throat> Did I put that in the uh, reflections? Wow. Okay. I know. It's my, it's my age. Okay. Don't forget the Christmas uh, party. On the 5th, December 5th, not October 5th, December 5th. So, um, Linus is going to make a presentation for us. Thank you very much, Stephen, and thanks, everyone, for giving me a few minutes here. Uh, so, last week, Larry Kane got up. Uh, and he talked about the financial results of uh, this year's uh, golf tournament. You may remember that the final amount raised was more than $124,000. That amount is going to be deposited with the BRCCF. The BRCCF. It occurs to me that there are a fair number of people in this room who don't know what the Brentwood Rotary Club Charitable Foundation, the BRCCF, actually is. Uh, and so my intention today is to start fixing that. We're going to spend uh, the next few minutes taking a crash course in the BRCCF. Now, here's what we're going to cover. First, I'll give a very brief history of the BRCCF. Next, I'm going to explain why the club needs a companion organization like the BRCCF. Third, I'm going to tell you how the BRCCF trustees are actually chosen. We'll go over the BRCCF's financial role in partnership with the club. We'll discuss how the BRCCF gets money. And then finally, I'll explain to you how you can continue to support the BRCCF and its causes. And that is really, really ambitious. So I'm going to get started. So, uh, so the Rotary historians in this room uh, may know that Rotary uh, International was founded in 1905. We sometimes refer to Rotary International as RI. Uh, you may also know that when Rotary raises money for its humanitarian causes, the money does not actually go to RI, but instead it goes to the Rotary Foundation. It's a separate organization from RI. The Rotary Foundation was established later in 1917. Now, those of you who are, have been in the club for more than a few minutes know that last year, the club celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, but our club has its own foundation, the BRCCF, which was founded only in 1996. So what's the reason for the BRCCF to exist? For a guy like me who answers tax questions all day long, uh, uh, it's all about taxes, and I'm glad to report that. Um, so it's about itemized charitable income tax deductions. Rotary International and our club are both internal revenue code, again, this warms my heart, 501c4 
organizations. They are nonprofit organizations, but they are not government-recognized charitable organizations. True charitable organizations have 501c3 status with the IRS. So both the Rotary Foundation and the BRCCF are 501c3 uh, organizations, and uh, that status allows them to accept donated funds and allows the donor to claim a charitable deduction on their income tax return, assuming that they uh, that they itemize. The difference, yeah, thanks for that. The, the, I'm excited about it too. Uh, so the, the the reason for that is that they're, they're government approved charitable purposes. That's what they do. They limit their operation to that. Our club provides meals, does all kinds of things, collects dues and sends money around to RI. The BRCCF is solely for charitable purposes. So who's on the BRCCF? Well, the BRCCF's governing board has officers and trustees and they're uh, uh, these are the current members uh, on the BRCCF board. Uh, Stephen Hammers serves as the chairman. I serve as the president. And the rest of the people listed here are all uh, officers or trustees who serve on the BRCCF. Well, how are they picked? And the answer is, you pick them. Um, every year, our club gets together. Uh, to have an annual assembly. That's typically in December. Uh, we'll go through that process again in about 60 days. We pick the officers and uh, the board members for our club, and we also pick the trustees and the board members for the BRCCF. And I'm, I'm glad that the BRCCF trustees and officers are also members of the club, and that's important. Because uh, if they serve the club and serve the BRCCF, we've got the best chance of making sure that the club and the BRCCF work together so that the funds that the BCS uh, has available efficiently help the club's uh, mission work, help the club's uh, charitable purposes. So what does the BRCCF actually do? Well, the BRCCF makes grants. Uh, that is, it gives away your money, um, and it, it does good in our communities. Here are some examples of, of what that means. First of all, um, we give scholarships. Local high school students are awarded scholarships of $3,000 per year from the BRCCF. You hear about that during the scholarship program during one of the club meetings in the spring. Um, what else does the BRCCF do? Gives major grants to worthy uh, local charitable organizations. Major grants are $10,000 grants. Um, and uh, every year the BRCCF board picks those that are entitled to get that money. You'll hear about them next month when Steve Huff, Huff uh, hosts the major grants program. Uh, each year, the BRCCF uh, selects a greater number of uh, community grants um, uh, uh, and uh, gives up to $2,500 for them. And then the BRCCF also approves certain kinds of one-time grants. The picture you see up there is the Bree Lovett grant. Um, Steve Stephen Hammers read a thank you note from Bree a couple of weeks ago, if you were at the, that meeting in which Bree thanked um, the BRCCF for its donation toward the effort to rebuild her house. Bree lost her house due to a tornado, lost her mother in that same tornado, and um, um, Richard Dickerson's son was involved in helping to rebuild that house so that Bree has a place to live. And you can see from the picture the devastation on my far right, and the rebuilt house next to it. Um, it's not just our $5,000 that went toward that effort. There were a lot of people, a lot of volunteers involved in it. But at the end of the day, your money ended up helping to rebuild that house for her. Uh, and then one other thing that I'm proud to talk about is uh, uh, the district governor, Daryl uh, Elshai, uh, asked us to consider donating uh, to help with the Hurricane Helene 
a relief effort in uh, East Tennessee and the surrounding area. And I am very proud to say that uh, just the other day, the BRCCFs approved a grant for $20,000 uh, toward that effort. So go ahead. Uh, the answer is, is that there was only one other club that had, uh, Larry asked uh, how that compares to other clubs in the areas. The only club that I know of in the area that has already got started with it is the Franklin Noon Club, and they started with 30 grand. The reason that our club chose 20 grand or our, our BRCCF chose 20 grand is that's the maximum that we're allowed to give without getting full club approval. So uh, we may decide to give more, but at the end of the day, that's that's the reason why we chose to give that grant. So uh, where does the money come from uh, for uh, us to be able to give it away? And the answer is uh, Pancake Day, right? Uh, people are running around Pancake Day with buckets asking for uh, donations for the from the attendees. Uh, and the money that's raised there goes to the BRCCF. Likewise, uh, there are sponsors uh, for Pancake Day. Uh, the money collected from sponsors, the net money collected from sponsors goes toward uh, the BRCCF. More money is raised uh, through annual sponsorships available uh, through our club. Uh, some organizations decide that they want to be an annual sponsor of the BRCCF. And uh, when we collect funds from them, uh, that money goes into the organization as well. The primary source of funds is uh, the golf classic, right? I mentioned earlier, Thanks to Larry uh, pushing us, uh, $124,000 was raised this past year. Uh, that, amen. It's it's amazing, and uh, of course, uh, we, as Larry always says, we can do better. But uh, he knows how much more, how much good the money does, and he knows how much more good we can do if we raise more. So I guess that's part of my challenge to you as, uh, as today's presentation. Uh, more BERCCF money comes from the annual fund drive. You'll hear more from Jennifer Bourne about this in three weeks. Uh, she'll kick off the foundation drive. She'll ask you to consider contributing both to the Rotary Foundation and to uh, the BRCCF. Uh, but uh, I guess I'd ask you to be generous uh, because both of those organizations are, are curators of your funds, and we do our best to make sure that your funds are used uh, in an efficient way to support the causes that you believe in. So um, let me close by saying this. Uh, please be generous uh, when uh, the fund drive starts. Uh, please consider uh, how much you can give to the Rotary Foundation, how much you can give to the BRCCF. Uh, and uh, toward the end of making sure that uh, the funds that you donate to the BRCCF are as efficient as they can be, uh, let me say this. Um, we're going to send out a survey uh, to club members so that you can let us know um, what causes you're passionate about. Uh, if you want to get a head start on that, you can scan the QR code. Um, uh, if you're not quite sure uh, about uh, the survey, touch base with Laura Troop. Uh, she's the one who put it together. She's an amazing trustee uh, for the BRCCF. And um, I just hope you'll, you'll be generous with your information uh, and with your money. And finally, on behalf of myself, on behalf of the officers and trustees of the BRCCF, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We're going to have a little fun. Anybody want to have fun? We're going to have a table talk. But what we're going to do is we're going to see what our knowledge is of Rotary. So Jordan is passing out an envelope, and in that envelope is going to be questions. George, if you and Jared can come join us over here, because you have a higher chance of winning 
if you work together as a team. Linus, if you either want to join our table or over here, doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we've got about 20 minutes, maybe 25 at the most. Talk amongst your table, go over the questions, write them down. All right. And at the end, I'll go through the answers. You add up what you had for your table and the top two will win a prize. Okay. And whatever you do, try not to let the next table know your answers because it's going to help them. Jared. All right. Oh, Jordan, you and I cannot do it because we know the answers. Lennis, you want to join us over here? We only have three because Jordan and I can't do it because we created it. <laughs> so sorry about that. So go ahead and start. You got about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, should be okay. All right. Have fun. Yeah, just write the answer down. I think it's 
No cheating with your phones, people. I see phones. No cheating. Well, I just said it. I only have two prizes, so you can't cheat. Thank you. 
I want it to be Miller. What gas did you bring to the meeting? I don't know. I was going to say, I was like, 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 I Thank you. 
Everybody keep your uh, your answers. Line them up because we're going to go through them. We got 15 questions and 16 points you can get. So if anybody gets all 16, you cheated. All right, two more minutes, two more minutes. All right, y'all ready to score? All right, lay all your strips out. Lay all your strips out because I'm going to go through each question and the answer. 
There's 15 questions for one point, and there's one question, which is the bonus for the year and the founder of Rotary. That's two bonuses. Bonus, bonus. Oh, the motto. That's right, the current motto. Okay. So that's 15 questions and 17 points. Ah, no partial credit. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go run through it. So just pull out the little strip as I go in the question and put a check mark or a, or a one or some on how many points. At the end, we're going to add up our points. And the top two will get a prize. So I'm not telling you the prize yet. But you'll like it, I think. All right. The very first question. In what year was Rotary the Rotary Wheel adopted by Rotary International as ex the exclusive emblem of Rotary? No. 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 56? No. What did you say, 1933? No. Susie, Dick, did you help out? Three. Is that what you said before? It's not what? It's not 19. What did you write down? Well, you're wrong. 1923. The that's not what you wrote down. The answer is 1923, but that's not what you wrote down. 1923. So apparently nobody got that one. Uh, <laughs> huh? Uh. Six months too late. Our right, next question. What are the Rotary Four avenues of service? The first one is club service, vocational service, community service, and international service. You have to get all four. Well, that's true. Can we get our According to this answer, there's going to be four. Well, according to this one, there will be four. That's a one-pointer if you got all four. No three out of four. Got to get all four. If you didn't, it's zero. Those that used your phone, you didn't get it? Shouldn't have used your phone. Okay, didn't count. You got a four or four. Next one. What year were women allowed to join Rotary? 1989. Hey, they passed it, they Okay. <laughs> 1989. All right. What is the principal next one? What is the principal motto of Rotary? Principal motto, motto. Not the next question, which is a bonus, the first motto of Rotary. What is the principal motto of Rotary? That was a good internet answer. That is correct. He who profits most serves best. If you didn't get that, you got it wrong. It says here, let me see. Larry's been giving us the wrong answer. All right, we got one. Hold on. The first motto, the first motto is service above self. 
These are your words. <laughs> right. The, it's the first motto. Yes, yes. The first motto is, he who profits most serves best. Principal motto is, service above self. Oh, did we get one right? So not yet. The principal motto, that is two points. Oh, we got two points. Yes. The principal motto is two points. The first motto is only one point. Did everybody get that? All right. All right, next question. Where was the first Rotary meeting held, city and state? What? Did you say Wentz? No, Chicago, Illinois. One point. Just because you got Chicago and Illinois is not two points. It's Chicago. Chicago, Illinois, one point. Bonus point, the year that we were founded and the founder. Paul Harris. All right, everybody's correct. 1905, Paul Harris. That is two points. That was a bonus point. All right. Who was the first president of the Rotary Club of Brentwood? He actually went on to become district governor. Great question. Great question. Where's that one? What? Charles Lane was the first president and Bob Billington was the first district governor. Remember, not the first. He just was a district governor. All right. Charlie Lane was the first president. Bottom line, Charlie Lane was the first president. Got him. Got him. All right. You got that right? You got a point. One point. How many years have we done the golf tournament? Was it? I have seven years down as an answer. Okay. Larry's the one. If you got eight, you got it right. We did a PowerPoint on this. All right. That's great. Larry? said eight. Yeah. All right, we're going with eight, guys. We're going with eight. If you got eight, you got it right. This is an interesting answer. An early fundraiser was a rodeo. What kind of rodeo was it for our club? Anybody else? GoPro. Anybody answer? Nobody knows? It was a bicycle rodeo. That was interesting. Table over here got it. Bicycle rodeo. Okay. We got a few more here. Where did we meet initially before the Martin Center? And this does not include COVID. It's Grandma Country Club. All right. That was one point. We have only one points left. Which Rotarian led us to be kicked out of the Richland Country Club? All right, Tom Lawrence. Oh, we actually have another bonus. This is for two points. What guest did he bring? If you put sheep, you're correct. That's two points. It was a sheep. All right, two more, and we need the exact number that is in DAC DB today. 
How many members do we have? How'd you know? You're exactly 100. Larry knows that. Okay. Well, that's, un that's no fair. It's 100, 100, exact number. All right, the females better know this. What is the percentage of females in our club? The best percentage, that's exactly right. But that's not the answer. What percentage? No, 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 exact, exact percentage. 26%. All right, everybody add up your answers. The most you can get is 18. 15 questions, there are three bonuses. Each bonus is two. So the max you can get is 18. So how many you got? There were two. Everything else is one. Michael, how many did your group have? You had 11. You had nine. What did you have? How many points? Seven? Okay. Ten. How many did you have? Eleven. You had 13? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So table here. We had two that I had eleven. Where are you? All right. We gotta have a uh little runoff here. Um Dick or Susie, give us a runoff question real quick. <laughs> but they they can't answer. You can't answer. But now all those food sources are locked up, and that's making them. That's a good question. All right. Did you say Chicago? What do y'all say? Oh yeah, where's next year's convention? Uh, they get it. Sorry, you were too late. Number two. You know, wisdom would say we would split the prize in half. Whoever says don't split it in half, but they get paid. All right. We're Don Scott. Thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. I help uh, pick up chairs, stack of eight. Have a good weekend.